I am here with the Santa Fe Sport. I did review the full-size version of this car, uh, which you can check out uh, on my uh, channel. I'll link to you on the description and at the end. But let's talk about this Sport a little bit first. Uh, here, Sport actually does make it a feel a little better, as we'll talk about in the drive review, which is kind of neat for this class. I mean, the front is aggressive. I like the LEDs. They don't show particularly well now because it's a dewy morning, but they look pretty cool. So I thought these were the turn signals when I didn't have them on, but these are actually the daytime running lights down there. And then if you do the parking lights, it's the ones up there. Uh, so I actually kind of dig that it's a little different, a little bit nice. Coming around to the side here, I really like the side profile of this. It's sporty. It's almost like Acura. I don't know. I like it. Also, it, you, as you see, you can get the dark wheels on this bad boy, which is pretty cool. I love that option. Uh, you don't see that on a lot of like Hyundai, Toyota, uh, you know, products in this class, just generally speaking. So it's an attractive vehicle. I said that about the real Santa Fe. The Sport is just as much so. And then coming around to the back here, nice LED design kind of around the edge there. Um, and then you do get kind of like that square dual tipped exhaust uh, this is not only the sport with the turbo which is great even and we'll talk about in the driver view but this isn't just the limited this is the ultimate trim which uh, limited used to be the highest hyundai did now they've decided ultimate uh, is a little better so let's check it out one quirk is i couldn't find a lift gate inside the car even though it's a power one uh, which i'm sure an owner can tell me if it's there and i just missed it uh, but you do get the power lift gate uh, and i kind of did one seat up one down so you can see with the seat up, the storage space is actually pretty good on this car, uh, which and which is kind of nice. Uh, under here, you get a tool kit and a fix-a-flat kit, which should mean there's storage under here. Yes, and I actually did use this. Uh, it's kind of great for separating out your groceries. Like I put a milk back there, some other stuff here that you don't want sliding around, uh, and it's hidden, which is nice. They get the Infinity subwoofer and, which is kind of nice for this glass, us Infinity surround sound speakers back here as well and then again with the seats folded down you just get a ton of space back here the back of this car is a nice place to spend time nice leather uh, you do get heated seats and sunshades as well this actually slid the seats forward and back it actually just lets you recline them uh, which is kind of neat so you can uh, you know do them to like various different like positions like that's pretty luxurious and pretty nice to take a nap back here two six feet people will be just fine and you get that leather uh, mat as well another kind of nice quirk back here usually they have hidden away somewhere down here little vents for you uh, hyundai decided to put them here which uh, kind of i like i think it's a good location it's kind of central um and uh it's kind of closer to you and your height uh, and then of course there's obviously like all cars uh, well not all cars but most cars even if they don't have vents in the back have a heating pass you know under the so seat. reclining that's also the lever you use to easily fold those down i don't get why cars have power folding it just seems to me like uh, something more to break uh you know and go wrong it's kind of nice you can fold the front from up here so if you're doing like an airport run that's the only time i could think of uh, uh you know that you might want to fold these from the front i don't know if these latches back here i actually first thought you you could put like your child seat back here uh but i think someone with children and child seats could tell me i think it latches around because usually i feel like they have the latches up here so to make it cosmetically nicer a hyundai put them in back i like how this you can fold separately i feel like these two are usually connected so if you have something really long but still want it to be a four passenger you can do that that's cool armrest here with cup holders as well and there is a cigarette jack is that gonna, yeah i was gonna wondering if that would be usb but it is a cigarette jack very nice interior on this car the, the gauges are cool looking and very very nice you do get these tasteful little bits of wood here and here uh, and then in addition to this kind of metallic looking trim uh, which uh, i wish it a vehicle of this price point which we'll talk about a little bit later but this guy is pushing almost 40 grand fully loaded and that's not even with all-wheel drive i wish this wasn't just like plastic which in person it's pretty you know apparent uh it is but i mean it's not inexcusable and then this actually looks better in person than it does on video i know man i wish even in 4k you could see it but the infotainment system is, is on the smaller side but it, it works well it does its job uh, quite nicely i really like um you know 
these systems as I pointed out before. Lots of buttons, um, uh, manual buttons for everything, which is cool, volume, seeking, climate control. Uh, so lots of redundancy there, which I personally like. Coming down here, you get an aux jack, uh, you get two cigarette lighter jacks, and you get a single USB. Um, hopefully there's more USB in the console, otherwise that's something I'm sure they'll do on the next update. Uh, I feel like now the norm is two to four USB jacks for newer cars. Heated and ventilated seats available. The auto holds function, which I love because you just turn that on in traffic, uh, hit the brake, and you are you are good to go uh, there. Uh, 360 camera and a parking view assist, which I'll show you. This is the around view camera, which is really cool. It is accurate. Uh, I love how they do that. And then of course you can do front or back. A cup holder here, really nice key on this guy. I don't usually talk about the keys unless they're very nice or, uh, you know, something different. This kind of area here, uh, in addition to the storage in there. Coming around to the console here, uh, there's this tray, which I like for change and loose items. Uh, they normally get lost and then for your bigger uh, stuff you want down there you can do that and then in here there's actually some uh, storage as well which is kind of nice it goes up quite a bit so i almost thought this would be separated because it does go up quite a bit but it's one piece and then you know it looks if it weren't wet out nice overall and again this wood is it looks like um you it would be like an open pour it's not but it, it has a decent look to it even if it's not real wood, it's it's a pretty good uh, impersonation of it. Or something I love on cars that have it, nice long panoramic roof uh, back here, much nicer on a sunny day than it would be uh, today, but even kind of cool actually today to I'll be able to see out like that. The seats are actually really comfortable. I love these headrests, they're like pillows. I think that's not a luxury sitting it's one of the best headrests I've ever uh, you know, seen or experienced. Uh, you know, nice uh, switches here. A uh, fuel door they moved over here, which I think is convenient versus some companies that hide it down there. Uh, but again, I, I may have missed it. I don't see anything for the lift gate uh, to be operated from inside the car, even though it's a power one. Uh, there. Let's check out some of these other buttons. While we're here, you can dim the display. There's actually a downhill brake control, which I like. Even if you don't get the all-wheel drive, that is there. Uh, three drive modes. There's some mild autonomy on here. There's lane keeping warning, heated steering wheel, which is nice, and then blind spot monitoring, as well as a smart cruise control. Obviously, Hyundai has newer systems, which surely they'll, you know, add in probably, you know, 2019 or whatnot. Uh, pretty traditional Hyundai, you know, steering wheel. Lots of information available uh, to the user in there. Uh, easy to get around, easy to navigate. Again, that lane departure is just a warning, not hey, where it'll actually keep you in the lane. Uh, but every, um, since the Elantra and other Hyundai vehicles now have that, Hyundai Kia vehicles really, I'm sure it'll come to this. Uh, digital speedometer, you know, pretty standard stuff there. One thing I do like is the home screen where you can kind of have different information here. So if, even if you have CarPlay going with music here, you can still keep their navigation, which on many streets will have the speed limit. So the turbocharged engine in this SUV is just really great um it, it's so torquey it almost you know would benefit the from having the all-wheel drive uh, if you live in anywhere where there's a lot of wet a lot of snow uh, or just want you know to drive this more spiritedly um, the all-wheel drive does help I, I haven't had this model in the all-wheel drive but when i had the full-size santa fe it did have it uh, and it was nice it made it a little heavier but it put the power down a lot better so the engine's great a little bit of a uh, turbo lag not bad but by modern standards it is there it may just as well be the transmission i can't really tell transmission's not bad in sport mode there's no paddle shifters uh, you can shift it manually you probably just want to leave it in sport mode uh, however uh, if you just want to go fast it actually you know it's pretty decent in sport brakes are good uh, like i said the steering this eco mode is one of the better out there usually i've just said have normal be somewhat uh, efficient and then just have a sport mode it's eco which is one of the better ecos i've seen and that i can actually drive it in eco um it doesn't numb the steering um which i don't get why a lot do that how much could that actually save um and it still gives it decent power so on the highway and stuff i use eco uh there's a sport uh which is actually it firms up the steering nicely as we'll discuss in the drive review and then of course a normal 
the steering is actually pretty decent in eco unlike a lot of systems i mean it's floaty and a little bit vague but it's not awful um, because by definition i don't know if i already talked about this but as electric steerings go uh, in sport and normal this one's pretty competent not a lot of feedback uh, but a very uh, you know pretty quick ratio so by you know at midsize suv standards having just taken it through a turn it is um you know competent in sport mode surprisingly so um the, the sport in this one does mean kind of sporty uh there are other suvs you know uh, in this price point that, that you know might handle a little better but this does have a nice balance i have to say um and it is very comfortable as i pointed out earlier these headrests are just oh, fantastic um, and it's, you know, a comfortable long-term kind of cruiser. Suspension is pretty isolated. Um, we're going over some, probably one of the bumpiest roads in the city I live in right now. And, you know, it's not like uncomfortable at all. Um, of course, when you really push it, the suspension, it's not a real sports SUV. It just has the name sport in it to me and small. It does give up, but again, it's surprisingly competent for this class. One area of improvement for this vehicle, um, there aren't a whole lot be, uh, because it is, you know, pretty comparable with everything else in the class. Uh, one area though is if you turn your blinker on uh, and there's a car in your blind spot, it beeps, which I think, you know, Mercedes has. I think it's a great feature just in case you happen not to see the light or the light malfunctions or anything like that, right? In this car, however, it stays on perpetually so long as there is someone in your blind spot which if you're trying to leave your blinker on to you know kind of let people know hey i want to come over uh in certain circumstances like you know traffic things like that can be quite frustrating um and it would be just as well served by systems that you know beep when someone's in there and then stay lit and then if a person leaves and comes back in your blind spot it beeps again versus just the perpetual beep 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 beep, beep. it's it's very uh you know it seems like a little thing but it's it's kind of an unnecessary feature that doesn't really increase the safety that much uh, it's a minor thing, but if you're living with this car for many years and you're driving a lot of situations where you know someone's there but have to leave your blinker on, you'll probably end up turning the beeper off altogether, which you can, uh, but then you're kind of losing a little extra nice safety feature there. All that said, would I buy this SUV with my own money? Personally, I probably would uh, because if I was going to keep it for a long time and, you know, figured I'd need a bigger SUV anyway later, I'd probably look at, like, the full-size Santa Fe because uh, you, it's still pretty competent overall and the price is, you know, pretty close, especially if you get some discounts or option that one a little less heavily. Also, you know, the CX-9, uh, you know, is a great... And having that extra third row, uh, it doesn't feel that much bigger around town, uh, you know, a, a larger SUV, but it just gives you so much more versatility if you are wanting one of these smaller suvs i really like this one um, let me know some of the competitors you know if you have questions or comments down below uh, i think the strongest you know one to cross shop and cross drive with this would be the mazda cx5 um, but yeah this is very competent and i probably wouldn't quite get the ultimate package like i said i think it's kind of funny they went from limited uh, to ultimate i thought you know limited was was quite enough and then on top of ultra they have options on top of that with the ultimate trim you might just want to go up to like a different suv because you know you are looking at almost 40 grand for like a smaller mid-size suv uh, but you do get a lot uh, for it if you just want something small with all the features and toys uh, you know that's somewhere hyundai always has and still uh, does give you a lot as much as you want uh, until next time, my speedy racers, drive on.